another episode of Quest Log. It's a weekly show about video games old and new. My name is Tyler Everett, and this is episode 84. Uh, it's July 7th, 2018, and I'm joined once again by my good friend, Brian Maxwell. How's it going, man? Yeah, great. Why not? It's going good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Brian. I'm glad you're yeah. here. Um, uh, once again, joining us is the one and only Luke Phillips. Yeah. It's fine. Yep. Whatever. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'd like to have a moment of silence for Aaron Kring. Who's on yeah. Right? God, God rest Hold his soul. Unquote. Shout out to Aaron Kring. He couldn't be here with us uh, for the past three weeks. Um, he's, he's out there working his dick off. He's, he's No, he's on vacation, Brian. He's living the dream. He's, he's He went to California. On vacation. He's yeah. well, riding quotes. Route 66 back home. It's, I don't think that word means the same thing to him that it means to other humans. Yeah, I, his uh, King Vacation is a special thing. It's full of daily events and, and checkpoints to reach in designated <laughs> times. It sounds wonderful, and we wish him well and pray his for a safe return. Has consisted of stress, deadlines, um, near fire incidents. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And waking up early. Yeah. Sounds so it's great. all the worst parts of life. Yeah, I think his truck got a little dinged up too. I can't wait to make fun <laughs> of him for that some more. Like We miss you, Crane. That sucks. We can't but, wait yeah. to have you back. We'll hear yeah, all the about universe it. really really lined up on that one. <laughs> yeah, we can't go into extreme details, but yeah, just know that yep. there there are other forces <laughs> at work that made that happen, I'm sure. That that made me a believer. So uh it's pretty special. Anyway, hey, how what have you guys been up to? How are you doing? How's your week going? Oh boy, it's it's great. The fireworks great. Fourth of July just happened. Yeah, yeah July that's, week. it's it's still happening. We cool. had fireworks tonight here. I don't know why. It's July seventh. We don't mess around here. Uh, in it's the, still uh, a holiday weekend. Yeah, we it's got all right. we got all these lakes and we fucking use them to blow shit up over here in Michigan. That's what we do. Yeah, Merca. It just happens from. The, the moment we can smell July on something, we just start blowing shit up in the sky yeah. over water. That's what we do, yep. and we do it for it's as like, long as we're legally allowed to. So, yep, it's like Hanukkah. We've got seven days, <laughs> at least, at least. Well, hey, speaking of uh, blowing shit up, let's talk about the shit we blew up in video games, huh? Here we go. Boom. Sorry. I had to try a little for that one. Didn't feel great. Yeah, we'll come back around. It was a little work. It's early. I got to put a finer point on it. It's we'll work it in. Um, hey Brian, what have you been playing this week, man? I have just been fucking around in VR mostly <laughs> this week. All right, all right. Anything? Uh, uh, anything real special jump out at you? Surprisingly, yeah. There's one called Tumble VR that I got because Sony's having a big old sale this week. I think it was three bucks. Hmm. That's that's a good price, and it seems very much like like not my kind of thing on paper. Like okay, it's it's one of those more of an activity than a video game kind of things where mm-hmm. it's a series of physics puzzles. You're mostly like stacking and arranging blocks in the virtual reality. Okay, um, it's oddly super like relaxing, and it's I don't know, it's kind of a zen thing. Like the video you're seeing now is uh, like I'm supposed to build a bridge between these blocks that they've set out for you. So, you know, it's all moving and uh, like manipulating objects in the world. And usually there's like a, like a bronze star or a silver star or a gold star hmm. ranking for each level. Gotcha. Like there's different shapes and different materials of blocks. And if you hold it up and look at it, it shows you the weight. And the material, so you know, like the rubber blocks will be kind of grippy, and then there's glass blocks and huh. like styrofoam blocks. Gotcha. All That's the neat. physics. Oh man, is it, VR is if it's nothing if it becomes nothing more than a good chucking stuff around in a 3D space simulator, yeah. like <laughs> then it's done its job because I'm watching yep. somebody just flip stuff over their shoulder and it's like, man, I spent so much time doing that in the couple VR things that I tried. But yeah, that's it's good. 
Yep, so you got some stages that are just like, here's a bunch of blocks, make them as tall as you possibly can. Like you've got a couple where you're putting explosives on a big stack of blocks and trying to scatter them as far as you can. Like I played one where you've got uh, like a laser beam and mirrors. You're trying to bounce the laser beam around into a specific area. Okay. Just some real cool shit. Yeah. Yeah, when the tracking is right, it feels oddly surreal to like tilt a thing around in front mm-hmm. of you that isn't there. <laughs> it's kind of cool because it, uh, your brain does something where it doesn't realize that it's not a physical item. Like when you can actually right. move it and you're watching it kind of like a one-to-one thing, it registers as reality. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat. So yeah, I've only played maybe an hour of this, but like I said, it was like three bucks. and It was three. one of those deals where I'm like, well, someone's going to like it. And yeah. It yeah. was me. Three, three bucks for an hour of entertainment you can't can't beat that so it's not bad well i'm gonna go back to it it's oddly yeah. oddly calming that's cool man very cool what else you been sticking in your eyeballs uh, i've been playing a lot of a game called diner duo okay mostly with the kids diner uh, duo. yep so you got uh, the player in the headset is like a cook in a restaurant, so you're taking orders and you know grilling up burgers and getting all the shit out of them that people want. Okay. And the wow. second player is a waiter who's running around taking orders. So like they've got to shout the orders to you, and they've got to come pick them up and get them to the tables. Gotcha. So they're using a traditional controller to do that. Right. And the what TV. they see on the TV doesn't match what I see in the headset. Gotcha. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. That it's kind of like neat. asymmetrical yeah. gaming is neat. Like, yeah, I love that. They need to do more of that. That's pretty that, cool. That seems like a perfect application for that. Because a lot of times that's hard. Like if you're if you're trying to look at the same thing that's on the TV is what the person's seeing in their headset. Like I feel like that maybe isn't as interesting an application of this. Mm-hmm. But this where it's like, no, it's like you're in the kitchen. You wouldn't be seeing what's going on out there anyway. So, like this is a good, you know. It's a good implementation of that that gameplay. That's cool. Yeah, but it's really neat. Cause, you know, things can hatch, get, and you know the person who's the waiter's got to shout out orders and make sure they're communicated correctly and get them to the right table. At what point does Gordon Ramsay kick the door in and be like, <laughs> you know, this, "This this place is fucking is filthy. It's You're gonna kill someone, man. <laughs> yeah. Shut it down. <laughs> that's 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 the add-on I want for this. Oh god, the Gordon Ramsay DLC. Yeah, there you that's go. That's a that's a system seller for for me. <laughs> Luke got me got me hooked on friggin' uh, Kitchen Nightmares. I started watching that. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And it's Tyler. There's a new version out. Did yeah? you start watching that on Hulu yet? No. It's uh 24 hours to hell and back. They're getting it's ridiculous with this shit. It's, <laughs> it's basically Kitchen Nightmares, but he does everything within 24 hours. Gotcha. Okay, it's the. Yeah speedball version of yeah so it's <laughs> go in and check out the restaurant tell them why it's shit and then they stay all night to redo it and then open the next day see okay the thing is doesn't he have like a real shitty success rate with a lot of these places like well, don't over half of them end up closed. Well. yeah it's like 60 or 70 percent but so, i mean a lot of these places are so close to closing down anyway like and they go back to their old routine it's human sure. nature mm-hmm. i think that's i think that's kind of like the funny lesson right it's like he comes in and gives them just this incredible opportunity and it's like hey all your problems are solved i'll tell you exactly what to do to succeed right. uh we'll dump a whole bunch of money into your restaurant and refinish it and make it all pretty and whatever tell you exactly what you need to do and then it's like and by the time this airs that restaurant's still going to be closed <laughs> Seems you're trying like to starting a new diet. Turn. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty accurate. It, it seems like starting a new diet, a new exercise routine where, you know, for like a few weeks you're just like, this is great, this is the new me, and then... Yeah, you know, then, a few then months you eat later, a double cheeseburger. Then, yeah. then your DNA kicks in, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> Diner Duel. <laughs> Diner Duel Gordon Ramsay edition. Make it happen, Good. guys. Make it happen. Yeah. Make that partnership happen. Um, Luke, what about you, man? What have you been up to? Uh, 
uh, I've been a very empty knight a little bit. You've been an empty knight? Is that yep. that's different from a hollow knight, or is it the Some same? Someone say thing? that I'm hollow. Hollow in your knighting. Okay. Yep. All right. Haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to play this week, but uh, I can't remember if I talked about it last week or not. But I did Mantis Lords. Oh yeah. Mantis Lords is such a fun fight. I agree. I like the Mantis Lord fight yeah. a lot. So um, it's three different guys you have to fight, and the first one comes up by themselves, and then another two come out, and it's just a friend Vito described it best as a dance. Yeah. You're just constantly jumping, dodging, attacking, dashing, jump again. It's a real cool fight. I, I don't even know like how far I'm into this game. I'm assuming not far at all. Not far yet. Yeah. From what I'm, I'm gathering. Far. But you see that's the thing that's it's hard to gauge because after like the first few power ups, um you you're able to go a lot of different places. Um and I'm even noticing now in the playthrough of this I'm playing through it for the second time I finished it um this week and immediately started up a new save but I'm noticing that like I I did things in a different order just even within the first hour or so um I went down hmm. and fought false knight first before I did anything else before I even tried to um get the what is it the spell power up I think is like the first thing that you get uh-huh I didn't do that um is that like one of the very first things you get. Yeah. I just went down just straight out of nowhere and went and fought him like the very <laughs> first thing. And so I was like way underprepared and I'm doing it in the steel soul mode mode, which is, um, it's unlocked after you finish the game and there's no respawn. There's permadeath. So it's like a hardcore mode. Yeah. Um, so I went into that fight just with nothing and I was like, wow. Okay. Yep. This was, this was a little bit challenging, but I, you know, I persevered and made it through. But yeah. Um, so yeah, it's hard to tell exactly how far you are. Like yeah. there's, there's three um, pretty early on. There's like three masks that will show up on your map. Um, and your kind of like macro objective is to go check those out and deal with those. Break the seals. That's, that's your, your big thing. So if you've done huh. any of those, then you know, you're kind I of in the any of those at yeah, all. You're still pretty early on then. Um, sure. But yeah, that's there's a lot you could be doing in the meantime though. Like in in my this is the uh, my switch playthrough. The first time was the second time playing through the game. So I waited to do all of those until pretty late. Like I just went around collecting all the things that I could um, around the whole map and kind of explored the whole thing before I did any of the any of the keepers so hmm. yeah yeah i got into deep nest the other day yep deep nest is yeah the that's your reward for killing the mantis lords is going into <laughs> a super dark and creepy terrifying underground area hope you don't mind spiders <laughs> yeah <laughs> Metal spiders teacher. and spiky worms uh-huh. and creepy things that come out of corpses and yeah. it's all bad yeah it's all bad. Yep. Deep Nest is a total bummer. <laughs> yeah, there's this whole area of having to pogo off of spiky worms over spikes while dashing through spikes. Yeah. And that was really difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And I eventually do it, and I get to the end, and I thought the game was trolling me because there was nothing there. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just spent probably a good 45 minutes over two days doing this and getting here. But there's this other area that you can pogo off of and get to another part and like, ah, there's the reward. Yep. And it felt good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this game of delayed gratification. <laughs> you've got like, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to really kind of master a thing before before it pays off um i can't spoil too much because you guys haven't finished it but there's um there's like there's a single ending you can get and then there's two more that you can unlock by going back and completing more of the game huh. um and one of those things it leads into like the true like a final final boss fight and when I played on PC, I never finished it. Like, I unlocked it, I got that far, I did the first ending, and the 
one of the secondary ones, but I couldn't ever beat that. And I was just like, well, you know, like I've completed 98% of the game. I saw pretty much everything. I'll leave that for a rainy day or something, right? Hmm. Never came back to it. It's been like a year. And this time I was like, nope, I'm going to finish that fight. And I finally took it down this week. It was like a really, really, really good feeling. Nice. Um, but it's it's very much like <laughs> you have to you have to practice it and that whole thing of it being like a dance is very, very applicable there too. You're learning all the moves and learning what counters what, so it's like you're you're kind of just doing these instinct reactions to different Yep. You know, tells from the boss. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you step here and I step there. Yep. And <laughs> that's extremely accurate in this because it kind of turns into like a bullet hell thing where you're trying to dodge through very, very narrow, uh, huh. you know, projectiles and shit. But it's it's one of the coolest fights in a video game ever. So I'm glad to see this game getting its due. Me too. Yeah. It came time. around last year and I don't know, didn't really get much attention. Well, that's the weird part. Is like anyone who's actually played it, though, is universally praised it, from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple outlets. I, I remember kind of passing it over, like you know, trying it, but being like, eh, whatever. It's a Metroidvania. Metroidvania. I didn't really dig it. Right. It's I, another one of these. Yeah, I feel like not knowing the pitch of like this is a game about being lost um can hurt it's it not welcoming because yeah when you first start it's you head like, down there and there's no map and not, like on a right off the rip a lot of people are just like there's no map fuck this i hate this yeah. and i kind of felt that way at first a little bit too but that adds a lot of tension to finding a new area mm -hmm. I'm just like i don't know where the bench is i don't have a map i don't know how to get back here i remember when you first were telling me about this game brian when you because you picked it up like right away as soon as it launched off a of kickstarter um you were kind of like an early adopter and I remember you saying like, Oh, it's kinda of like a run based thing. You're going like, you know, you're going down it feels mm -hmm. like you're going down into this, you know, kingdom and then coming back up to the town and like, you know, buying new upgrades and stuff and I'm like, Okay, yeah and I didn't get that feeling from it. You know, I didn't feel like it was kind of like a run thing to me. I didn't ever feel mm -hmm. like I was getting that pull to go back to town very much. I was just like, Oh, I'm just oh. loving exploring this place you know but then like it's I, a push your luck thing because when your right. bags are full of money it's like i really should stop <laughs> yeah. something's gonna happen and i'm great at spend this yeah, talking or, myself yeah. into like eh, my health is full i i'll be fine <laughs> right i'm feeling confident right now there are there are some times when you get you get into an area and you get like juggled around like, like something will hit you and then you'll fall into the spikes and then you'll fall in a pit or something and you lose mm -hmm. three masks just like that and that's one of those moments like your butthole puckers up you're like oh I might be in yeah. way over my head right now <laughs> I don't uh, know if I'm going to be able to get out of here <laughs> if you get down to one mask and you panic and it's something that you you know could do just fine but you're panicking uh huh yeah I had, a, I had that the other day Vito was just like, oh shit okay he was telling us in the group chat today, he's like, he died right before this boss encounter and his shade, like, went on the other side of a locked door, you know, Mega Man style, you go in the boss room mm -hmm. and the ch -ch 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 doors come up and it's like, you guys are locked in here together until this thing's done and he's like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't know, I think I'm fucked. <laughs> but he managed to, like, coax his shadow over and kill it and get out of the game and be done. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, I'll tell you, uh, Steel Soul mode is no joke. Like, so the way that works is you don't you start the game over fresh, and if you die, game over. Uh, I made it up to Hornet so far, and that fight is real stressful when you only have five masks and you cannot die. <laughs> like, I uh, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. I, I, I'm wondering how long I will last before it before it claims me. But it's fun. It's fun. It's a fun way to play the game. It's definitely more stressful though. But I'm enjoying it. Nice. I'm gonna get a lot of. I'm gonna get a lot of time out of old Hollow Knight here again. So it it's been just does such a good job of porting it over too. Mm -hmm. I have I had, so I've had a couple asleep. bugs though. Well, I've had a couple. Yeah. Uh, hmm. <laughs> the. Uh, 
one one of my uh, playthroughs on. I'm trying to remember if it was the final boss. No, it was one of the optional ones, but it was one of the tougher optional bosses when I was going through my 107% run. Uh, I beat him, and like there's a there's a death sequence that happens where the boss like dies and explodes into a bunch of stuff and the game crashed i get this error that says the software is closed because of an error i'm just like okay <laughs> thanks that's not very descriptive but all right and so i you know launch it again and sure shit it picks up before the fight so ah, i have to do it over again so it took me two more times, but I but I got it. So that was that was good. But yeah, it's I've been seeing that a lot, and I don't know if it's just because I'm playing the Switch so much, it's just crashing from being on and being used so much. I don't know, or if it's something with the game. Hmm. Not sure, but I've had zero errors. Yeah, I'm probably just working mine over time. <laughs> I put in a lot of. I think I've got 36 hours into this playthrough on Hollow Knight. So it's um, yeah getting a workout nice anyway um yeah we'll we'll be talking more hollow Knight, i'm sure as you guys are making your way through it and seeing all the fun little things i want to i want to do like a breakdown of the lore and stuff once you guys get towards the end because it's i think they're doing a lot of really cool storytelling in this game that i don't think you start to appreciate until the end so yeah i'll say i haven't picked up on a whole lot of lore yeah, it's all mostly suggested at. There's very few things that are right. that are flat out, you know, explained. But huh. um, yeah, there's a there's a neat story happening here if you if you look for it. So yeah, but what else you been playing this week, Luke? Uh, dabbled into some Sea of Thieves. A little Sea of trying Thieves. To, yeah, trying to finish up the exploding skeleton content. Me too. Came out. That was pretty fun. Yeah, it's. It's a nice little twist on the game. Yeah, we talked about it a lot last week. Um, we've just kind of been been at it some more. Um, the only downside is just trying to get another crew to work with you. Yeah. To do the fort ones, and honestly, that's that's getting time. to be kind of the downfall of these uh, content updates. It's being forced with other people. I can't even count the number of times we've been on a skull fort. And another boat rolls up, and we're like, hey, like, let's team up. Let's do these accommodations. Let's work together. And you're shooting at us. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> the pitch for it's kind of rough. It's like, hey, go rob this bank. Everybody who's around, go rob this bank together and don't betray each other. <laughs> like, yeah. it's kind of, I don't know. I feel like it's inviting that kind of. Yeah, gameplay a bit, but uh, people don't know each other, and everyone wants to be a hard ass. Yeah, that's I think that <laughs> it's that's just playing into the it whole too. mentality of shoot first, ask questions later. Yeah, or not even asking questions, just shooting. <laughs> that's the part that bums me out. It's like we, I think we've been trying to use the tools that we have to communicate with people. I'll jump on the the megaphone or the speaking right. trumpet or whatever, and be like, "Hey, you guys want to do the." Do the skull fort together. Do the commendations. Like you can have the loot. We'll you know let you let you off without bugging you. We'll help you out. And people just you know don't say anything. And so you're like left wondering, hey, are they going to be cool or not? Then the cannonballs start sailing into the side of your ship. You're like, okay, not cool. Got it. You choose the path of pain. <laughs> now we have to fight for 25 minutes or yeah. four hours or yeah several hours. Last night was a mistake. <laughs> we, we we got baited into a fucking four hour long it wasn't stalemate. That long. It, it was. Close. I mean, you mean after the key dropped or before the key? Yeah, I <laughs> don't know. Both. I don't know. All I know is at one point the words "It's four thirty in the morning" came out, okay. and. Yeah, Brian, Brian's, Brian's doing his best <laughs> Drew from Giant Bomb uh, blinking white guy mm -hmm. meme there. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt too. So, long story is short, we were at a skull fort. We tried to recruit somebody. They attacked us. We went back and forth as a dual sloop, sunk a four-man galleon a few times. Got the skull fort keep, or key. Had to hide it on another island. 
and then try to trick them into thinking that we didn't have it or that we hid it somewhere else. And we end up just wasting their time and our time for three hours. Yeah. You didn't get gold? No. <laughs> not, no Let's not, not go for any that. further. Bro. Not for that. <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> it's a little bit of a touchy subject still. Yeah. We do have we do have memories. We did learn something though, <laughs> so we, they can't take that from us. Anyway, but yeah, I don't know. I would like to see other content updates. Not force you to work together with the crew, or maybe add in a system to assist with. Yeah, that's the thing that, that I've. Um, I'm definitely more on board with. I just I don't know how that is going to work. Like there should be there should be an easier way to form some kind of like tentative alliance with another crew, um, you know something maybe where you split the loot or you do something you know something that has like a some kind of pact or something that right. is an in game mechanic that actually facilitates this kind of stuff because as of right now, you know. <laughs> we had an issue the other night where we agreed to like not take any loot, but then we heard these guys talking about betraying us and trying to sink us. So we turned on them and, and sank them. And it was like, if there was just something in place where we could say like, Hey, if we fulfill, you know, as long as we don't fire on each other or whatever and break this pact. We split yeah. The I, didn't, I didn't mind that so much because we use the tools in the game. Yeah. We, we agreed to terms. We worked well together we sank another boat that was not being friendly whatsoever as a mm -hmm. team yeah but then they decide just to be tools about it and like maybe that's how it should be like maybe you should just always be able to decide like nah fuck that i'm gonna just betray these guys that'd be i guess that's probably intended but yeah i don't know uh a way for like-minded individuals to group up somewhat outside of the game or something like that would be good as of right now there's no way to do that for these specific like things where it feels like you're kind of achievement hunting or you're, you're all going after this one objective there's no real good in way in game way to say like hey I'm, I'm just here to try to get this thing done please let's work together I know it's been talked about before about having a neutral ground yeah. kind of like uh, like a like a Nassau Island sure, or yeah. Port Royal kind of thing. Yeah, like Port yeah. Royal, you know, to where there's no PvP. You go there, it's just like a town center. And, you know, some people scoff at it, like, well, it's a pirate game. There's going to be PvP anywhere, like, just a Care Bear. But it would be nice to have just that meeting place for these social events. Because right now, that's what they are it's they're social, interactive, cooperative events. With no place to be social. Yeah, I've heard. I saw a good recommendation that was like, don't have it exist in the same game space. Like, don't have it be a place where you can, you know, get loot or, you know, run from people. Just have it be literally a, like a, a hub, like some kind of a thing that you join that says like, you know, <laughs> you, you kind of like port into that area, and now you can group up with people that are just hanging out there or whatever. That that would be a good idea, I think. Like, so. go through a door and you get ported like to the, a the pirate server. Yeah, like the pirate legend type thing is right now, you know. Oh, well, there's some fireworks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there needs to be something. Because <laughs> right now it's just such a chore. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Sea of Thieves. Um, oh, I had one little fun story. I played with my daughter this morning. Um, we played for probably like an hour and a half or so, and... Mm -hmm just kind of did like merchant quests and she kind of, she just kind of rides the boat with me, <laughs> like looks at stuff, checks stuff out. She doesn't really do a whole lot, but I let her steer. I was like walking her through steering and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, we finish up, we go to an outpost and I'm like trying to show her how to buy things, try to like, you know, go through the, the different merchants and see what they have there. And right at the end, this, this four man galleon just crashes, boom, right into the dock, right in front of us. And I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on here. And they're kind of scrambling around in the deck. And uh, my daughter looks over at them, looks at me and just goes, well, I guess shoot them and take their treasure. <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> so so I did. And um, <laughs> we got we got their chests. And yeah, I was just a little bit surprised that she was so quick to 
And so, matter of fact, to just, you know, hey, well, I guess those guys are wounded and don't know what they're doing. Uh, let's take their stuff. <laughs> uh, there's always two, Tyler. Yeah. A master yeah. and apprentice. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> so, she's learning well. Well, Luke, I played the same things. I played Hollow Knight and Sea of Thieves, but I also um, played a little uh, super shit. What's it called? Super it's shit. The super shit. Super shit. I the follow that one. up to shit. Yeah. Uh, the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. I did play hey. it. Hey. Yeah. It's free. It's the Life is Strange uh, sequel, prequel thing. Um, I was just impressed that you said it right. Yeah. Like, You're reading it, aren't after, you? After, no, I didn't actually. It just says Captain Tyler. Spirit on my screen. All right. We're looking at the same Google Doc. Um it's I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> it's a neat game. Um it's very much in the same vein as Life is Strange, but without the uh like rewind time mechanic. Uh the character you're playing is a young boy named Chris. Uh, he doesn't mm-hmm. have superpowers, but he pretends that he does. And it's a it's a sad and cheerful story about depression escapism and uh, youth i think (laughs) um i don't know it's it's a neat little thing i think i only put about hour and a half into it um that's about right but you know for the price of free you kind of can't go wrong um i mean brian you said like it's not perfect it has some of the same kind of things that happen in life is strange where there's some Mm -hmm. there's some weird like some dialogue and takes and some dialogue, mm-hmm. you know, some writing issues. But I think on the whole, it's better than the first Life is Strange game. Um, yeah. I think they're coming from, uh, I don't know, like a, um, like a sincere place, yeah. you know. Yeah. The there's something cool about just watching Chris play. Like he, like you can mm-hmm. you can walk through the house and he'll just pick up toys and. You know, start playing with them and, and it gives you kind of there's some very light choice making happening um right when the bad guy you know like betrays you do you kill him or do you let him go mm-hmm. and it's never as like you know you choose to destroy him and like chris yanks his head off and like blood comes out or anything like that it's it's always like right. still like smashing the toys this, together he's smashing them together and he's like got a reason for it it's never like this is the good choice or the bad choice really right. like he's you can tell he's just a good kid and i don't know he's got a a pretty good outlook on life even though he's in a kind of shitty situation so yeah, I, I recommend checking it out. It doesn't take long. It's a, it's a little hour and a half thing, and I'm glad I played it. Um, but like Life is Strange, it's a flawed and beautiful thing, and I think that's that's all right. I think that's pretty all mm-hmm. right. So there you go. It makes me excited to see what they do with Life is Strange too. Um, yeah, it's in September. Yeah, I'll be I'll be checking that out. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up what we've been playing. Let's get into some news. Hey, it's the news. And boy, is there some games coming. Free games, baby. That's what we're after. A lot of free games. If you got the Twitch Prime, if if you're an Amazon Prime member, subscriber... I don't know the right terminology. Uh, you got 21 free games coming to you. Mm-hmm. Some some big ones here. Uh, you got your Pillars of Eternity. You got uh, Tacoma. You got what else we got here? Brutal Legend. Brutal Legend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Red Strings Club. Red Strings Club. Brian and I played that and enjoyed it. Yep. Um, Battle Bru- Chef Brigade. Brutal Legend is on my boy. They almost nailed it list. <laughs> yeah. Um. Goner, you played that. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a Switch game. So yeah, there's some some neat stuff on here. So hey, if you good news, if you got the Prime, you got some games coming for free. Yep, get after it. Get 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 them while they're hot. I would say probably not the most impressive list, but it's free, so no real complaints there. Yeah, 
I'm not sure I'm really going to pick up anything, but I mean, yeah. free stuff. I mean, if you, you already missed. Gold, if you don't want it, whatever. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Yeah. You already missed uh, Pillars of Eternity if you didn't grab that, which is a shame because that's an awfully good one of those. Yeah, and I hear Pillars of Eternity 2 is really good. Yep. Might be one of those things like Divinity where I skip on the original and play the second one. And then never finish it. Yeah. And then proclaim Same. it game of the year. Well, Sounds right. <laughs> I love a, I love a good pun, and these titles, these uh, are, you know, headlines don't get much better than Valve Leak's Steam game player counts. <laughs> I don't know, just leaking Steam Valve's, it's, it seems poetic. Kind oh, of. It all makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like poetry. It, it is like poetry. So it seems like there was a there was a bug in achievement data. Um, I didn't read the, the fine details here, but it looks like they managed to work achievement percentages into like real numbers that they could look at to see like what the top right. games are, um, and get like an estimate of how many players were in each of these games. Um, kind of unsurprising when I'm looking at the list here. Uh, Team Fortress 2, right up at the top. Counter Strike, right behind it. Player to Knows Battlegrounds. Um, I don't know. Anything really stand out here to you guys? The fourth game on the list is called Unturned, and that's a game that I had to look up because I had never heard of it. Oh, yeah, I never heard of it either. I don't know what that is either. What was it? What's Unturned? It's um, it's a free to play. It it looks kind of like a like a Roblox graphics oh, yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah. They um. Yes, I've seen advertisements for this from for what seems like years now. <laughs> Even yeah, it came out in 2014. It's like on a recommended list from somebody who plays it on my Steam list. It always pops up. Um, definitely, it doesn't look like, yeah. It looks like a Minecraft slash Roblox kind of multiplayer yeah kind of survival thing. So yeah, interesting. Um. It's cool to see Paladins up there. Paladins has got yeah. quite a few players. Uh, Skyrim, unsurprising. Um, What's funny is how many of the like the top ten games or so are free. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense. Like, TF2 used to be a paid for game, but that went free a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, CS:GO, that's a free one. PUBG is the only top three paid for game. Hmm. Uh, yeah. What well, Warframe is free, Counter Strike Source is free, Paladins is free, Terraria that's basically free. Anymore. Yeah, who doesn't own Terraria at this point? <laughs> I think it's been on sale for like a dollar so many times. Yeah, I think I bought it for a buck fifty at one point. Uh huh. But, yeah. yeah, pretty. I mean, the ones that aren't free, you would kind of expect to see in there. Left for Dead Two. Uh, Skyrim, Portal 2, Civ yeah. 5, GTA 5. Yep. Yep. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty what I would expect for the most part. Yeah. No but real surprises still, there. Still cool to see see the player numbers. You're talking like 50 million people play T TF2. Like, wow. That's or at least half played it. I mean, like. Right. That's true. Yeah. Like, it makes sense that the free ones would be high because yeah. I'm sure I've installed Team Fortress. You know, booted it up and been like, nah. It's true. <laughs> a lot of people it's have, true. I'm sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, what's next on our list? Oh, uh, Nintendo Switch has another free-to-play game coming to it pretty quick here. Luke, you yeah. said you mentioned checking out TennoCon, uh, Warframe. Yeah, this announcement was pretty cool. I had no idea what Warframe really was. Mm-hmm. And then you know their con, which is called Tenno Con for some reason, is was today. I can tell you, Luke, it's because oh, the do. player character is known as Tenno. A Tenno. Yeah. It's like a type of these like robot fucking sentient Warframe thingies. <laughs> but yeah, but I, uh, I they this a spent bit. a ton of money advertising on Twitch, where they sponsored a bunch of streamers to play it this hmm. weekend. And uh, I, one of my streamers that I watched was playing it, so I checked it out, and I was like, this seems pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it is so cool. They had a partnership where, like, basically, they would play the game for a few hours, and then 
the con was streamed live and they would stream it and then comment on it as it played. Hmm. And it was pretty cool, actually. But they, they had a cosplay competition and they had like a panel of like five or six people up there and the one the winner came out great costume but all it really was was a distraction so that this one guy named Sheldon on the side could pull out a switch and start playing with it so hmm. when this guy went off stage the rest of the panelists looked over and was like hey we're on a live stream. What are you doing on your Switch? Like, get off of that. Like, stop playing Zelda. <laughs> yeah. So all he did is he stood up, took his Switch, and put it in front of the camera so they could see it. And it was Warframe on the Switch. And the crowd just went crazy. That's cool. That's a neat way to announce it. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was pretty neat. Like, it wasn't flashy. It wasn't special. But just with what they had for the presentation, it was memorable. That's it was cool. neat. That's a cool way to do it. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm excited. When I first got my PC back in 2012, when I built my a gaming PC, um, I didn't have a ton of games to play on it, and I was doing. I'm trying to remember. It might have been a, it might have been a year or two after that, but anyway, I was like trying to get into like, oh, what games could I play? You know, that are just free. It won't cost me anything because I I didn't have a ton of money to buy new games at that point. So I installed Warframe and checked it out, and I played quite a bit of that. Like. It has really good. Um, the run around feels real good, Brian. <laughs> and there's, all right, all there's, right. You can do like wall runs and and some kind of cool right. ninja shit. Um, so for people PvP? who don't know, like, what would you describe not, it as? Not really. It's uh, it's it's kind of hard to describe. Like, I didn't ever really grasp what I was doing. I don't think. Like, <laughs> y- okay, y- you you go into these different I'm planets listening. and you clear out these different levels. But it has this very like vast feel, and there's a there's a co-op element to it too. You can get other people in to run with you, and um, the couple times that happened, like the people that I got with were way higher level, and you can get these different. They call them warframes. It's like different um, suits drop. that act almost like a different class. Like they'll unlock new abilities and different play styles and things like that. Um, and so, like, I could never keep up with these people that I would get paired with. So I wound up just kind of playing it alone. Um, but it's real fast paced. It's third, you know, it's a third person, you know, action combat game. Um, but it's it's good. Like, I think it I think it'll be a good fit on the Switch. Um, Switch needs good games, and I'm all about having more platforms to play stuff on. So, would you describe cool. it as a third person Destiny? Um, that's what it seemed to be. When I, the little bit I saw of it today. I don't think it's as... I don't think it's... I mean, I don't know. I haven't played in a very long time. So it's not unlike that. I think that's that's maybe a, a fair a fair analogy. But um, I think Destiny's got more of a, a rigid story and kind of like a better narrative thing going on. This feels a lot looser. If It's like you get dropped into these planets and it's just like it's treating it almost like a like a run or like a level to be instead of like part of this bigger story like a, from like what i can tell kind of yeah that's what it feels like yeah so i don't know it's cool though like i i would definitely play more of it um cuz i haven't i haven't booted that game up in years so yeah seems neat i would love to check it out more stuff coming to switch is always good Hell yeah. And it's, it was poured over by the same people who did Wolfenstein and Doom and some other game, I think. Oh, wow. Cool. If I remember right. So they're kind of like the go-to people for porting something to the Switch. Like they know the hardware and the coding on it inside and out already. Awesome. That seems so like it should be a real good port. Seems like the way to do it. Um, hey, Brian, you played a lot of Moonlighter. Yeah, I did. Done, done finished it even. What yeah, it's I, one of my favorites this year. What if I told you that uh, Digital Sun Games revealed a 2018 development roadmap for the game? What would that do to your brain hole? I would be happy that the game is finding enough success to justify them doing that. Yeah. And I would feel conflicted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that kind of leads, we'll, we'll kind of bridge this gap with a, one of these here. 
It's a topic. It is a topic. The topic this week is going to be updates in DLC and when do you feel done with a game? I felt like this this news article kind of sparked a conversation mm-hmm. on this earlier in the week. Mm-hmm. And it kind of plays in there pretty good. So what do you, why would you feel conflicted about it, Brian? You mentioned I, feeling conflicted. Uh, I don't know. I feel it, it makes me feel bad. This is upsetting to me. Okay. Because I finished Moonlighter. Like, yeah. I'm done. I don't. I don't go back and play games. Almost never do I do that. You got a lot of games to get through. You don't have. You know, you can't be spending a bunch of time digging up the corpses of games you've put in the dirt. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's, more du- there's more dungeons that are very dark. True. <laughs> True. But a lot of the reason for that is because I like I don't feel compelled to go back and play games again. Right. You know, like games that have a set beginning and end. Usually, once I'm finished with them, I'm finished with them. Yeah, um, I I feel that way sometimes. Like, uh, good examples today. I finished uh, I finished the awesome shit, the awesome adventures. What is it? Awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. I don't know why that's so hard for me to remember. Oh, you got it. You got um, it. And there's a there's a very like short to do list that you get for the game. Mm-hmm. It's like six things or something on there. I think I crossed off two or three of them um, before I saw credits on the game, and I was like, hmm. I could go back and try to see some of that stuff. And then I was like, but I already saw the ending. So, eh, did I guess, you, guess I'm done. Did you finish the superhero costume? No. Oh, Jesus, Tyler. You're really, really doing Chris wrong. I got three items on his list, I think, and I didn't actually finish it. I know. Light armor or heavy armor? Oh, heavy armor. Come on. Okay. Okay. Just, just checking. Yeah. Heavy armor, helmet, uh, colorful. All right, so all right. Go. There you go. And it was all of those things, by the way. <laughs> Spoiler alert, but it was very colorful <laughs> what I had put together there for. <laughs> but yeah, so so but then again, take Hollow Knight and I'm literally right. squeezing every ounce of soul out of that thing literally. Uh so I don't know. I'm I'm weird. I'm I really middle. like seeing everything there is to see in a game like i explore i search all the nooks and crannies that means when i'm done with it i don't know now there's going to be more moonlighter that i haven't seen next right, month right and i don't really want to play through the whole game again to see the new stuff but i don't want to not see the new stuff is that is that kind of what you're going to need to do do you think i i don't know they they mention coming but, not this month but next month will be a new game plus mode and right it looks like that's going to add like whole new types of weapons a whole new item type to get so but this is a thing that happens with other games too and like i think it's neat that they add more features to it and i don't want them to not do that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know uh, like hollow knight's another good example i finished it and then they started releasing dlc and it's awesome that they do that, but once I'm kind of out of that mindset, once I've run through the gauntlet, it's really hard for me to get back into that mindset and pick it back up. What about you, Luke? Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. Like, once I've gone through and finished the game, if they add something in the current game, it's a good chance I'm not going to go back and ever see that. Are there certain games where you're more likely to do that than others for either of you? Like games that are run based or endless, you know. Like I play Darkest Dungeon still. I play Stardew Valley still. Those, Those are things where you be... like you're actively like, well, if they add something to it, I'm gonna gobble it up. You're right, because right. I'm not there to see the end of a you know finite story. I'm there right. more for the moment to moment experience of it. Right. Gotcha. I would say something like Diablo Three is a game that if they add new content to. I'm fine picking it back up and running through it again. Mm-hmm. Like when Necromancer came out. Cool, brand new experience, but even though I've seen the content already, it was just fresh enough. Yeah, we still easily put three weeks into Diablo 3 again when they dropped easily. that. So. And that's more about building your character and right. seeing right. you know the cool stuff in the game than it is about finishing the game. But then there's DLC for something like Dishonored, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite games of all time new dlc dropped for it 
I don't care. I went through, I finished the game. I don't necessarily need to see right. this other side of it, even though it's from a different perspective, a different character. So Brian, right. you mentioned a while back that you like got every achievement in Oblivion, right? Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion. Yeah. Did you buy did you buy Oblivion just plain or did you get like the game of the year edition when that came out? Do you remember? Hmm. I think it was a game of the year edition thing. So I that's the one I got too. Wow. When I got it, it was with the Shivering Isles and the Knights of the Nine expansions already built in. Um, I'm trying to remember. And then they added a bunch of DLC after that was like the houses and the the like the different um it was like housing expansions for it. Yeah. And like smaller. Um and added like very like little to it, but I remember buying those and playing those too. So Yeah. It was either game of the year or like I bought the DLC at the same time. Got like a package like deal I, on it or something. Right. Like I didn't, you know, finish it and then come back later. Gotcha. Because once I'm outside of that mindset where I'm really excited about a game and into it, you know, once I kind of you know, finish the game, I'm out of that mindset and it's hard to put that hat back on. Gotcha. See, that's exactly what happened to me with Skyrim. Like all the DLC came out for you know, building yourself a house and the, what's the thing? There's a vampire one and something yeah. else. Mm-hmm. Dawn Guard and then uh, Dragonborn. Yeah, and by that time, I had so many hours into original Skyrim, I didn't give a fuck about the DLC. Even mm-hmm. though I loved the game itself, but like Brian was saying, I was done with it. I had moved on to something else. See, when I when a game like really gets its hooks in me, if it's something like Skyrim or Hollow Knight or one of these games where I put it like, okay, yep, that's going to get slotted into a top 10 list for Tyler. Like, I can mm-hmm. jump back into those anytime, so... Like right now, I'm playing through Hollow Knight a third time, and I don't feel any sense of needing to stop. And they're going to release the Gods and Glory expansion or DLC pack, whatever they're calling it, update pack, um, soonish. And I will be very happy to jump back in and check that out when that happens. Um, same thing for now, Skyrim. I loved the the DLC for that and consumed that as soon as it was available each time. So. If the whole house building thing would have been a part of vanilla Skyrim, I would have had another extra hundred hours into that game. Yeah. Because I love that mm-hmm. aspect of it. Like that was one of the things that I did most in Fallout 4 mm. was building up my settlement and decking it out and making it look good and I'll let it you was know fun that to me. The... I love the resource gathering <laughs> aspect of that. I'll, uh, it was definitely not as fun in Skyrim as the Fallout version of that. <laughs> right, you, yeah, because um, they, they built upon it and made it better and better right, and right. more features. But yeah. Um, it's going to be even better in Fallout 76. <laughs> yeah. Boy, there's a, yeah. maybe I saw a funny news story about that where uh, Todd Howard kind of bitch slapped Sony just openly. I, I like that. Like they're asking him if there's going to be a crossplay and he's like, well, uh, you know, Sony won't let us, so no. He, <laughs> like he was very like not PR about. It. He was like, a, he's like, I wish we could, but Sony won't play. So, yeah, it was it was almost Guess like not. it was almost like, yeah, Sony's less than cool about that or something. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, I think Todd Howard and Bethesda is a company that can get away with saying that about Sony mm-hmm. and them not retaliating. It's not the. F- I mean, this is a little off topic, but that's fine. That's not the first time there's been some weird stuff with them and Sony. Remember the Skyrim release on the PS3? It was like fucking It was rough, wasn't it? At first. Yeah. There was something to do with like once your save got to a certain size, the PS3 couldn't read it anymore. <laughs> and oh. some people would just like sorry, we don't have enough memory to open your save anymore. <laughs> it was it was bad. That's really broken. And it was like a hardware limitation thing, so it wasn't even yeah, right. Bad. Anyway, I remember those days. On the game fax message boards <laughs> being less than kind. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh I think that's gonna pretty much wrap it up then, guys. Um do you got a final pin to put in your 
you know, when you're done with a game kind of thing. It's pretty much when it ends for you guys, huh? Yeah. I'm done whenever. Yeah. Like a more recent example is Far Cry 5. Loved it. Got through maybe half of it. And then just never clicked play again for probably like a month now. Hmm. Just for no reason. Like I was just came that out and got busy. And yeah, pretty much. Hmm. Okay, this is Far Cry 5. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Yeah, early access is a, is a weird thing for me now along this this axis. You know, there are early access games I want to play, but <laughs> I know they're going to get added to later. So, yeah, exactly. It's the same problem, yeah. You don't know, like, again, if it's not something that's meant to just be a, it's like a roguelike or a run-based thing, then... Uh, Slay of the Spire is early access, and I have played the shit out of that. Right, and it's because you can just, you know it's no problem if they add a new class to just be like, okay, let's try it with that one and, yep. and go. It's kind of the Diablo three thing. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. For me, it's just about, uh, you know, it's how much I, how much I'm into the game. If it's something I'm super, super into, I will, I'll come back to it at any time, but I'd love to see new content and new things added to it. If they, drop, if they dropped a big thing into Skyrim today, I'd be downloading it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would have no problem going back into that world. So, yeah, it's cool to see how everyone kind of ticks in that regard. But, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for the show, guys. Um, thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, you can catch us here every week on Saturday nights at twitch.tv slash questlogcast. You can find the show in podcast form or on YouTube. Uh, get all the links right over there at questlogcast.com. A uh, big shout out to Visager for the music that you hear on the show. You can find more Visager stuff at visager.bandcamp.com. Um, I, I, uh, that's, that's what I got, man. Episode 85 is coming to you next week, same time, same place. And, yep, coming uh, at you in hi fi. In hi fi and high definition. Through the magic of the interwebs, we'll be here. So, big thanks to everybody, and, uh, hope you guys have a great week. Have a good one.